Righto, Ray. We've got the inside of your case header here. What model header is it? A 8230. 8230. And you're going to tell us a bit about the, uh, the setup of what to do with the concave uh, when when we're setting these in, things up for harvest weed seed control. Peter, probably probably the most important with all the headers is understand that you've got to get the grain and the and the weed seeds out of the rotor. And and I really am of the view that most of our modern headers are too blocked up. Yeah. Um, a lot of blokes take wires out of the the second concave. That's a great idea. Uh, take every second wire out, but you need to get in your mind that it's screwing through the rotor and it's only in there five seconds and you've got to get both the grain and the weed seeds on the on the sieves, otherwise all the harvest weed seed management systems won't work. So and tell us about this one. This is a bit more closed up in this first section here. Well these are the these are the two concaves. Um, in barley, um, we'll take every second wire out of these uh, to open the, open the back one up, or you can use uh, other concaves. Um, basically, the, the more you get out of here, the better, and if you can still get a sample and get some more wires out of here, that's even better still. So it's just a matter of on your machine, and I think the, the key is open it up. That's yeah. the key. But what I really like about the cases is the, is the grates. You know, I've, I say I can put a box of golf balls in in the case, and the bo golf balls will all end up back on the on the sieves. Now, uh, simply because those they're, they're big holes. Because they're big holes, and you've got to understand that the straw is so long. It's you know it's a foot long, and it's laying it's laying flat along the rotor, and and it's got all the grain and the weed seeds tangled up with it. So. You, you need you need to actually stir it up and get them out and you notice if you could see in there we put an extra bar across uh, on the rotor to to stir it up a bit more but I, I'm of the belief don't be afraid to open them up here like if I go back to my old 2388 and if you focus up the top the grates the grates were made in the 2388 out of that sort of material we, we just we just cut every second slat out yeah. So, don't be afraid to open them up and, and experiment with them and even if you've got to go back and close them a little bit, that's fine, but don't be afraid to open the last bit up and just remember the straws long and laying and screwing around like that. And so, when you're setting your header up uh, for all your settings for harvest weed seed control, are you doing anything different? Uh, compared to your normal header setup, or are you just setting it up for grain sample? Just purely setting it up for grain sample and getting maximum grain out of the rotor. Um, and and there, there's part of your yield. I think, I think there's a lot more grain tipped out of headers than we believe. Yeah. Righto, Ray, here we are in the back end of the header now. Let's talk about when we're setting these things up for maximising weed seeds into our chaff cart or into our Harrington Seed Destructor Mills, what's the go with setup in here? Very important in all of them to have a shroud where, where it actually splits the air out of the rotor and the air off the sieve, where it splits it in half and deflects the weed, keeps the weed seeds from going over top of your chaff system into the straw spreader. Like some of the headers have totally two different systems, but make sure you've got this divided so you can't interfere with the air so the air excess air of the sieves goes over top and because the weed seeds have got a kernel they won't go any higher that's eight or ten inches high and and the air the rotor from the the air from the rotor goes over top and this traps any weed seeds they'll never ever get up this high they'll always the weed seeds are like grain they'll only ever be a couple of inches above the sieves so you stop them going over the back and escaping from your capture system. So there, there's the shroud there. You can see it's eight or ten inches up from the sieves and that just gets the material into whatever system you're using. Yeah, and so this shroud here, we can't show them the mills, but this is the shroud into the integrated mills, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is one of the shrouds. It goes into one of the mills. Yeah, and it's uh, another one. Uh, and, and it's a funnel, and where, where we're standing here is another funnel. So this this picks up half, yeah. and the other one goes alongside it into, there's two mills. 
and for the chaff cart, it's exactly the same theory. It's just deflected onto the belt, yeah. and it's the same. Um, you've got to have the chaff going over you, make sure it doesn't spill, and it goes onto the belt and then up into the cart. Yeah. And what about our setup in here with our wind and that sort of thing? Do we adjust that at all, or is that just for normal grain harvest? N normal grain harvest, but it's most important that like for, for, for me with the destructors, my destructors need to actually demand more air than the header produces because they interfere with grain cleaning. And with the chaff cart, it's very important that your shroud allows the volume of air, so you turn around to high volume, low pressure, you have enough room for that air to get down and vent onto the belt without interfering with the airflow through the sieves. And I think if you stay an eight or 10 inches gap around it, that'll let it out. We have measured it all. Um, and that's what we've come up with. That eight or 10 inches yeah. lets the, the volume of air, you're talking about high volume, low pressure, has got to get over the back and then either go into the mills or go into the belt. And if we just look up here where our straw goes, the straw comes off that beater there and travels up high and hits this roof and then down into the choppers as normal. That's right, Peter. Now, that, the, the beat is actually an accelerator of the straw off the back of the sieve. You can have a chopper there. It's the same. You can see the, the, the paint worn off where it hits and, and where it migrates around the back. So you've got that, that clear area. Um, but the main, the main thing is that that air is probably way, way out on its own up here. But the main thing is to stop the weed seeds. Actually, if you didn't have these shrouds on, the weed seeds could end up in the spinners. So the big in question, if we get it set up right, how, many, how much of our weed seeds do we get into our mills and how much goes out with the straw? I reckon if you get it set up right, you're back to no more than 2%. Going out with the straw. Out with the straw. It's, it's only a machine, it's never going to be 100%. And that means when you're starting to get that, your grain loss is down. Now, some of the work Nick Berry did by using the uh, chaff to do the testing on the mills, their control sample showed that there was actually 200 kilos of wheat in the chaff. Now, with these modern headers, I believe there's more and more grain getting thrown out the back of them purely because they've got that much horsepower, they just poke it in the front. So what's the number one trick to stop chucking grain out the back? Um, probably yeah. slow down, I, th yeah. I don't know, slow down, um, but... Um, I certainly keep using trays to measure it. Um, the boys always know I come out in the paddock and I'm chucking the trays out measuring it, but um, canola in particular, it's too easy to chuck canola. You can chuck a half a tonne out without trying. So uh, uh, with the chaff cart, you can actually sample on the belt. You would do a bit of a stop. You could see what's in the belt, but with the destructor, you, you haven't got any way of checking it till I dream up a a quick capture thing that can take a sample, but um, basically we've got to have the confidence. We've got to have the confidence in our settings with the destructors um, to know where we are. We sort of know what it's going to yield, uh, but basically that's a negative with the destructor. You're actually destroying everything that's coming off the sieves, so be aware of that.